I have been working on a project for a long time, over a year if we're counting when I first started working on it. But the idea has been in my head for a long time. Let me show what it is. Jukebox, a website where you can randomly generate song structures for different genres, including the different song sections or tracks it may have, and how those progress over time using different patterns. Not only that, but then you can download those randomly generated song structures into Ableton or FL Studio. This means you can actually start working on your own song straight away using this as a template to help guide you into making your own song. Let's go over that again, but in a bit more detail now. This is a house genre that I'm randomly generating. There are a bunch of different genres to choose from, and there's gonna be even more in the future, but for now, this is the selection. As you can see, every time I click generate, a new song structure is made. This is randomly generated, so every time it's going to be different. Maybe a little different, or maybe a lot. You can see different parts of the song. We start with the intro, then going into a beat section or a breakdown, and then back into another beat section. On the left are different tracks that you'd expect from a house track. The kick, clap, that up HH stands for upbeat hi-hat, but also other elements. And if we generate it again, then they'll be a little bit different. In the main area, you see these blocks or squares. These represent patterns or loops just like you would find in FL Studio or Ableton. It's essentially something musical that probably will repeat. So if you see the same colored block just repeating over and over, then it's doing just that, it's repeating a pattern, whether it's a bass line or a lead melody or a kick drum playing over and over. Each block on their own represents one bar. Some of these are longer though, because the pattern is multiple bars, maybe two or four. You also notice a slight change in the color it gets a little bit darker sometimes. This means the pattern is different from the others, like pattern one versus pattern two. Maybe it's a small variation of a couple notes, or it could be something drastically different from the rest. There's no real indication at the moment, so you're free to interpret that how you want. When you generate a structure for a different genre, there should be differences in the types of results you get. For instance, techno might be more minimalistic than house and focus a lot more on the kick and hi-hat during the drop. When I generate a trap beat, you'll see 808 in the tracks a lot, as that's an important part for a lot of trap tracks. All the song structures are generated using an algorithm that I made. They aren't pre-made, but created on the spot when you click that button. You could just use this functionality on its own, looking at the song structure to inspire what elements you choose in your own song or how to arrange it. This is free for everyone to use. Just go on jukeblocks.io and click on generate. But the next half is where it gets exciting, downloading that song structure we just made and opening it as a project file in Ableton or FL Studio. For this, you will need an account, but they're free. So click the download for Ableton or FL Studio button. There are options, but we'll get into that later. There isn't too much that needs to be explained here, but you will download a project file or maybe get asked to save one. Then you can open it up and you'll see that it's a one-to-one -one recreation of the song structure that you just generated. The sections match up, the same tracks and patterns do too. In FL Studio, each track will get its own channel and insert as well. In Ableton, all of that is already combined into the track. From this point on, it's your job to fill the rest in. You can choose the synths or samples you want to add and the melodies you want to write. So really, this is kind of like an outline that you get to color in yourself. A nice workflow benefit of FL Studio is that because patterns are linked together, when you write a bass line, that's instantly arranged into your track, like all throughout. In Ableton, you'll need to copy it to all the other patterns as well. There are lots of clues to use here. Here I can see there's a different pattern at this part, so I can tell that it should be a variation, maybe a kick fill or a snare fill. Here I can copy the melody again, but change it in a couple places. Now I also see I can play some effects noises. There's also an automation track that implies what could get automated during the song, like reverb or filtering or muting a certain element. As we start to fill in the patterns and add our own sounds, the song comes together. Jukebox is meant to be a guiding hand and a creative prompt for making music. This doesn't have to be a strict template you follow, so don't feel that you can't veer off and differentiate from what's being generated. In fact, I encourage it but there should be enough to work with if you just want to use what's been generated too. This could be suitable for beginners just starting out, but also anyone who would just like some creative prompts to push them into making music. 
to people who don't even need a creative prompt but just want to make music quickly and efficiently, with the arrangements taken care of, you can spend more time on just focusing on the sound design or mixing. So Jukeflux is mainly generating templates at the moment, but future plans are to incorporate note generation like chords and melodies, and even sample and sound generation. Whilst this is all far away for now, I have created the first steps towards this too. That's where the options come in, and those are features for subscribers. Yes, paid options. So let's go back to the site again. Just to give a tour of the site, down at the bottom we have some footers. The update news is where I'll just post about new features. The about slash FAQ page gives information about how to use the site. As I'm on the first post, I should give credit to Lucia, who made a really cool design of the website that I tried to implement to the best of my abilities. It's not a great replica, and the grid could still use work but it did inspire a lot of the choices that I did here. I did learn that I strongly dislike working with CSS and doing front end work in general. Fortunately, I had my friend Emily, who I hired to do more advanced CSS stuff that I just didn't know, and Ruben, who came up with the name Jukeblox. So thank you all. Anybody can generate a song structure, but to download, you need to sign in and verify your email. Then you can download a project file. But some features are limited, like the options and which genres you can choose. For free users, there's also going to be a limit on the amount of downloads you can do a month. But for the rest of this year, you can download 50 projects a month, which is a lot. Starting next year, it'll be limited down to five a month, although this may change. But to access these extra features, you'll need to subscribe. If you want to, click on the subscribe button. The subscription is four euros and 30 cents a month, which I chose because that's roughly five American dollars. You can subscribe with Stripe, which uses your credit or debit card or bank account to pay. But there's also PayPal, if you prefer that. When you subscribe, you'll be sent back to the homepage and your subscription should be activated. You can end the subscription anytime and you'll remain subscribed for the remaining days you paid for. Now the options should be accessible and you'll see extra genres are also available to you and you can download endlessly with no limit. So what are these extra options? Well, Marcus is pretty self-explanatory. It will add the name of the song segments to the project file. Then we have template notes. This is the beginning of note generation. Really, it, all it does at the moment is just put a MIDI note into every pattern. But for certain genres like house, techno, it will make a stereotypical four on the floor beat. And for other genres like trap or lo-fi, it does a halftime beat with the snare on the three. with rapid hi-hats as well. Nothing too crazy, but it does make putting some drum samples in just a little bit quicker so you can hear it straight away. And talking about hearing it straight away, the third option is default samples, which will load in some drum samples from the default samples. As long as you have those default samples that came with Ableton or FL Studio still installed, this should just work fine. You also get a different drum machine depending on the genre. Even though it's just drums, I do like how you can instantly hear something it makes it feel like you've really just generated some music and you can just immediately start working on it. What would really be cool is to start including my own samples and even presets in there so those different sound possibilities would be expanded upon. Sound generation and note generation are the next big obstacles to tackle and I don't think it will be done too soon, but these options just give a little taste of what it could be if done well. Then we have Ethel colors and these just choose the color of the tracks on the side actually really like the teal look even more than the default color, but the default is still here if you prefer that. There's also rainbow mode if you like that. That's all the options and all the genres for now, but more will come. In fact, let me know what genres you would like to see. Two big ones I can think of are future bass and dubstep, but I don't want to be limited to just electronic music genres. There's no reason why rock or metal can't even be in here. Let me know so I know which ones I can work on next. Sometimes there'll be weird quirks that happen, the randomness I'm using stops templates from all being too similar to each other, but sometimes you encounter weird things like no patterns being generated on a track, or the automation might say low pass the ARP when there isn't any ARP at all. Other weird quirks are seeing the intro in the middle of the track. That's just because this section is essentially the same as the intro. It just happens not to be in the actual beginning of the song. Uh, some of the pop tracks are 220 BPM. That's super quick but really it's halftime, so 110 
It's only this quick, so I could use the same halftime MIDI. Otherwise, if I used 110, it would just be like double halftime. But that's probably something I'll, I'll work on in the future too. Most of this just comes down to the algorithm. And now that a lot of the work for the site is done, I can go back to working on that. Although I put a lot of work into this project already, it's only really just the beginning. And with your support, it could grow into something a lot more. I've always thought this was cool, but I have no idea how it's going to be received. So feel free to let me know what you think about it. If there's a lot of support for Jukebox, I'll actually be able to hire some people to help uh, so that we can work on bigger things. If not, I'll still be working on them just at a much slower pace without the extra help. And that's it. That's a project I started when I was still creating the Excel drum machine. And finally, it's ready to be shown to everyone. This has already been a long video, so I won't go into how the algorithm works, but that might be a fun video for another time. This also won't be the last I mention of Jukebox. Like I said, I plan on adding more features and more genres, so I'll keep you posted every now and then. It's cool how in future videos, I'll have something to promote that I actually made myself and can stand 100% behind. I look forward to hearing your thoughts.